selling coke, smoking crack, and telling all on Instagram. Which Hollywood kid is this messy? Keep watching to find out. Cameron Douglas, son to actor Michael Douglas and producer Deandra Luker, struggled with a drug addiction and went to prison for the sale of drugs. His grandfather was the famous Hollywood icon Kirk Douglas, so the Hollywood lineage went way back. Despite the access and privilege of such a pedigree, Douglas's addiction flipped his entire life upside down. He told Variety, The addiction really started to wreak havoc on my life in my mid-twenties. At that point, I had a burgeoning movie career and a pretty successful DJ career. Then I started injecting cocaine and it literally chewed my life to pieces in a short period of time. Douglas explained that he was working on a movie shortly after he began doing heroin, but when he depleted his supply, he became dope-sick during filming. His father stepped in and said he would help, but Douglas rejected the offer, admitting that his loyalty at the time was to his addiction. I thought that I was fundamentally not put together properly. I was just going to take it as far as I could take it. In 2009, he was arrested for possession of crystal meth and served a nearly eight-year prison sentence. Douglas was released in 2016, and three years later, he published his memoir, Long Way Home, to share the rocky trajectory of his adult years. Was his famous family worried about Douglas's tell-all book? He told Variety, I'm sure they were concerned, but the irony is that it was my father who was really pushing me to write this book. So he seemed to have a pretty good balance between how much he was going to blame his parents <laughs> uh, versus uh, gene makeup. Charlie Sheen, born to actors Martin and Janet Sheen and sibling to actor Emilio Estevez, has long been a topic of conversation for his antics and behaviors. It's difficult to pinpoint one or two episodes in his life of addiction and acting out. In 1990, he went to rehab, but that was only the beginning. As USA Today reports, Sheen's then fiance Kelly Preston was shot in the arm, and accounts are fuzzy as to who was responsible. He was shortly after linked to the famous madam Heidi Fleiss for his solicitation of prostitution and later in his life, he told The Guardian he'd slept with over 5,000 different people. Sheen was later diagnosed with HIV. In addition to news about Sheen's drug addiction, he also made headlines for physically abusing then-girlfriend Brittany Ashland. Later, when he divorced Denise Richards, she also claimed physical and verbal abuse, per USA Today. Sheen was arrested on similar charges in 2009 when he and then-wife Brooke Mueller got into a dispute. His behavior took a major professional toll, unsurprisingly. I'm by winning. I win here and I win there. Now what? In 2011, he sued Warner Brothers Studio and Chuck Lorre after he was fired from Two and a Half Men. In a lengthy letter obtained by TMZ, Warner Brothers wrote to Sheen's lawyers, Your client has been engaged in dangerously self-destructive conduct and appears to be very ill. In October 2014, he was sued after he allegedly physically attacked a dental technician. And that's not even the end of it. Okay, you also blame testosterone cream. Want to talk about that? I can only say that, um... Don't smoke that stuff. Where does this leave him? With a lot of amends, no doubt. Christian Brando had a turbulent life from the start. His parents, Hollywood actors Marlon Brando and Anna Koshvi, made headlines over their volatile custody battle for him, as noted by The Hollywood Reporter. When he was 13, Brando started a fire in his school dormitory and was then abducted. It was his mother who orchestrated the kidnapping while Brando was in his father's custody. A source said the event was so distressing to Brando that he began purchasing guns out of a deep fear of another abduction, according to The Guardian. In high school, Brando began using drugs and subsequently dropped out. While he stayed close with his father and was given a home by the Godfather star, he also found his dad's fame overwhelming. Producer Carmine De Beneditas said, It's a very heavy load to be called Christian Brando. Things got deadly on May 16, 1990. According to the Washington Post, Brando's half-sister Cheyenne Brando told him that Dog Drolet, her boyfriend and the father of her unborn child, had been physically abusive. Brando got into an altercation and shot Drolet, who died. Brando claimed that it was an accident and ultimately pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter. He was sentenced to prison for 10 years, although he only had to stay four and a half. Following his release, Brando suffered from addiction and was charged after physically abusing his then-wife, Deborah Presley. In 2005, Brando faced homelessness. He later developed double pneumonia and died at 49. John Bon Jovi and his wife Dorothea Hurley welcomed their first child, Stephanie Bon Jovi, on May 31, 1993. 
the couple had three more children, all sons, after Stephanie. When she was a 19-year-old student at Hamilton College in upstate New York, Bon Jovi overdosed on heroin. Thankfully, according to the Daily News, her friend Ian Grant called 911. The New York State 911 Good Samaritan Law had just been passed. Prior to that, people could have faced legal consequences for drug possession, which meant that individuals were reluctant to call for help in overdose cases. Per the New York State Department of Health, the Good Samaritan Law allows people to call 911 without fear of arrest if they are having a drug or alcohol overdose that requires emergency medical care or if they witness someone overdosing. John Bon Jovi spoke to Metro about the experience, and he explained the difference between his daughter's overdose and intravenous heroin use, saying, It wasn't what you see in the movies. It's a pill form that these kids have access to. It was the first and hopefully the last time. She's healthy. The greatest gift that I have is that I have her. We'll get through this. It was a shock for everybody, and hopefully we learn from these life lessons. There's a lot of pressure on kids these days. There's access to things that my generation didn't have. There's mistakes that are made. And Weston Coppola Cage was born to Nicholas Cage, nephew to director Francis Ford Coppola, and Christina Fulton in 1990. In April 2011, 20-year-old Cage married his first wife, Nikki Williams, in a quickie ceremony after reportedly meeting in rehab. According to ABC News, only months later in July, Cage and his new wife were arrested on charges of domestic violence. Cage called the incident a huge misunderstanding on Facebook and blamed it on alcohol. He claimed Williams was at risk of self-harm and he intervened to restrain her. He later announced that they were getting a divorce. Well, I truly believe that challenges are meant to be conquered and pressure's meant to be inhaled. He married Danielle Cage in 2013 and they welcomed a son, Lucy and Augustus, in 2014. Cage told people that his son inspired him to get sober, saying, It got to the point where people thought I was digging my grave. Lucien saved both of our lives, and we are very blessed to have him. It's just a very joyous time right now. The couple had another son, Soren, in 2016, but the marriage ended soon after. Cage moved on to Gila Aronian in 2018, and that couple are parents to twin girls Cyrus and Venice. In 2017, Weston was charged with a DUI and two counts of hit and run by the Los Angeles City Attorney, with a blood alcohol level that registered at 0.15. For the record, operating a vehicle in California with a blood alcohol level of 0.08% or more is illegal. Police reports from the time stated that Weston hit traffic signs, mailboxes, and parked cars, eventually ramming his vehicle into a tree. Redmond O'Neill, the son of Farrah Fawcett and Ryan O'Neill, went on a week-long crime spree in May 2018, per Radar, and was arrested for attempted murder. He physically assaulted five different men and robbed a 7-Eleven store while in the Venice Beach area. In jail, O'Neill was examined by Dr. Annette Ermshar, who noted that he had reportedly been hearing voices. O'Neill had three diagnoses that could only be exacerbated by alcohol and drug abuse, bipolar disorder, antisocial personality disorder, and schizophrenia and he was not competent for a trial in fall 2019. O'Neill was moved from jail to a state hospital. O'Neill had allegedly been in rehab several times, beginning in his teenage years, according to a later publication by Radar. He was also arrested in 2008 and again in 2011 for drug possession. Following the 2011 arrest, O'Neill was ordered to complete a five-year probationary period and one year of treatment. In 2015, he was sentenced to prison after his probation violations, but was released in 2016. After Farrah Fawcett's death, Ryan O'Neill told People that his son, quote, never recovered from the loss of his mother, and then claimed to Vanity Fair, he's been in 13 rehabs, he's had a terrible life, this is not a privileged guy, he never had any money, he never had a car, he got arrested in prison with heroin in his pocket. I just got this feeling, man, um, that this summer is, a. Uh... It's about to be a white boy summer. Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson's eldest son, Chet Hanks, admitted to his struggle with drug use. On Instagram, he spoke about getting help and why he was away from social media, explaining, I know, like, my name's been in the media about me, like, going missing or getting kidnapped or something. I just want to let you all know, I've been in rehab, and I'm doing pretty damn good. Hanks indicated that having famous parents made his highly publicized struggle with substances more challenging. He went on in another video, a couple months ago, I was selling coke, doing coke, I even smoked crack. If I can change, you can change. There is a solution. So now you know a little bit about my life, and I'll continue to share more stories as they pop up. This wasn't the only headline-making event for Hanks. In 2021, his ex-girlfriend Kiana Parker sued him for $1 million on the allegations that he mentally and physically abused her, according to USA Today. Parker alleged that Hanks had made murder-suicide threats in their Texas home. She said, I had my nine-year-old twins in the house with us. It was around 3 a.m., and I waited until he went to sleep and took my girls to the house with my mom. 
Hanks countered, alleging there had been domestic abuse from Parker. As TMZ notes, Parker denied these charges. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.